Today we're going to talk about all the other OVAs, original video animations, and specials that either I don't have a ton to say about or weren't released in America or are just so short and minimal that it's best if we talk about them together. Yo, Son Goku and His Friends Return. I really wish this one would get a dub because it's a rare, simplistic slice of life OVA featuring Dragon Ball characters in a time of peace after Majin Buu has been defeated but before Super. It's mostly a comedy, but there's some action to be had. Trunks and Goten get the spotlight for most of it, but it's nice to see all the characters, newer and old, help out to save people when it briefly gets serious. Especially Yamcha. The villains are kind of goofy, especially with their designs, but they have some cool attacks, and they turn good at the end and eat with everyone, which is just classic DBZ. Vegeta's brother, Tarbul, is in this movie, and he looks like a child. It's a pretty throwaway plot device that doesn't get explored, unfortunately, but the dialogue is great between them. And seriously, I went ahead on this again. This one's really funny. I smiled throughout, laughed a bunch. It had been a long time since I'd seen it. It is no business being so endearing, and yet it is. The banter between Goku and Vegeta is always a standout, but everyone gets a little moment, and it's sweet. It's canon as it's two years after Boo, and that's said, and I'm so happy that this was better than I recalled. I just wish that Funimation dub with the cast that I grew up with was there, but I really, really enjoy it. I give it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Dragon Ball GT, A Hero's Legacy. It's fun. It's weird that this aired before the finale of Dragon Ball GT. I really think it should have just tied in with the end of the series a little bit more, either edited into a final arc or the movie expanded so it's a little bit more of an epilogue, but it's okay. It's definitely a different flavor and goes sort of back to Dragon Ball and Goku Jr's arc from cowardice and fear to one of courage is nice. It's just surrounded by a lot of cute, pointless fluff that isn't all that compelling. That is until the OG Goku shows up. I love everything about that cameo and what it speaks into for the incredible, perfect end of Dragon Ball GT. I still wish we had gotten a TV series or a manga or something about that 100 year gap when Vegeta takes over as Earth's protector, which is such a fitting end. There's a bittersweet melancholy to the end of Dragon Ball GT, just like I feel in The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. Here it's not quite as well done, but it's still a decent time that explores a little bit more of that perfect ending. Three out of five stars. Episode of Bardock. I probably need to give this one a little bit more credit for introducing Super Saiyan Bardock to the canon, and I don't think this one's canon. It might be in some universe. There's implications there for those. The Japanese voice acting can be a bit cringe, but I appreciate what the film does overall. It's too brief, it's too short, and there's some fun to be had and some drastic changes to the canon, like I mentioned, if everything here is taken in a non-ambiguous way. Is Bardock the legendary Super Saiyan that they talk about from 10,000 years ago that it went, went insane from his own power and destroyed himself and a lot of everything around him, maybe even the Saiyan's original home world? Or could Bardock potentially be the original Super Saiyan God that defends the race. Part of me likes that second one better, but I wouldn't mind a whole series or another film exploring those two Super Saiyans from the legend. However, none of that's explored at all. It just If you know the lore, then you can think about it and speculate, but I wish they'd at least explained how he time traveled. That's such a wild thing that needs some exposition to be fully bought, and it's just not there. The action is okay, it's very cliche. Uh, it's too short, very sweet, and kind of cool, but a bit frustrating when you really think about it. 2.5 out of 5 stars. Dream 9 special, One Piece, to DBZ, and Toriko. Huge DBZ fan, casual One Piece guy, and I know nothing about Toriko. Are they just in the same world here? Could it be the jump verse in the games? They don't really explain it. I don't think it's meant to. While the overall tone and plot is silly, there's some fantastic animation. I just wish it was a bit more engaging or interesting. And I can't believe my DVD set even has this. There's a terrible translation with the subtitles, but it's better than seeing in YouTube clips over the years, I suppose. It's a fun, low stakes time that kept me smiling and Vegeta has a brilliant moment. It's just a cool crossover that's a bit forgettable by the end. Three out of five stars. I know those were kind of rapid fire and maybe I can talk about them more at length another time, but comment below. Let's talk about in the comments, what are, which of these you like? Did I rate them too low? Did I rate them too high? What do you think? And remember, always look for the good.